All right, I'm ABC2 meteorologist Mike Masco. Wednesday uh, weather blog, we are going to talk about and continue to talk about the Zacta pattern. The storm that, you know, oh boy, all that fallout. Um, the storm that didn't mature into a historic blizzard, which was advertised again by the models, um, is out of here. That is one storm in a pattern that I'm expecting to continue to churn out storms like that. Um, and I had advertised this and again told you that we were eventually going to switch out of what we had going on with this mild-ish type of flow and, you know, everything really not supporting storms to all of a sudden these big, huge troughs developing across the eastern United States, thus churning out storms. And I want to show you what, uh, and again, this is comparing the European on the left to the GFS on the right, and this, this is looking into the future, the next five plus days out. And again, we're going to continue to see this idea of some sort of trough across the eastern United States. Um, I also want to bring to your attention this blocking that continues to show up south of Greenland. It right now is an eastern based North Atlantic, uh, negative North Atlantic oscillation. You really kind of want to see more of a western base, uh, but eastern ba base can certainly slow down the jet and allow for coastal storms to develop. So we see that. We still see this west coast ridge sitting. Uh, actually the GFS looks a little bit better in line with more of a western ridge uh, sitting across the Rockies. This is a little bit further out towards the west. Um, so actually towards the east is the GFS, more towards the west is the European. Uh, so what I want to see is a, a ridge centered a little bit more over the Rockies. Again, that would see a tighter jet in here and you would get this negative, you know, jet p position allowing for these storms to get captured and stay close to the coast. So that's what we're looking at going forward and we have two storms to, to talk about going forward is the uh, a clipper system moving in Wednesday, uh, Thursday evening looks like for Baltimore, Thursday night for Philadelphia and points north and then we're going to watch another system, maybe a more significant system as we go into Sunday night and Monday. So today we're just dealing with the fallout from the storm bringing in some blustery conditions, cold conditions where daytime highs are into the 20s to around 30 degrees. But what we are watching right now is another clipper system that's pouring out of the northern plains. Again, note that we don't have a lot of moisture with this one uh, versus the last one, which was just a, a bowling ball of energy that came down, had some decent moisture with it. This one a little more limited in terms of moisture content. That's why we're not forecasting a major system or certainly not expecting any major coastal development from this as it's going to slide off towards the north. In fact, take a look at the forecast model. This is the high resolution GFS showing that that clipper stays to the north. Again, what that means is we get more of a southwesterly wind flow along 95 and that should keep um, a wet snow situation where you get some colder air locked in over the northern uh, counties or north and west of 95. There might be some slushy accumulations and some light accumulations as you get uh, along the Maryland Pennsylvania line and into the Lehigh Valley in Pennsylvania and then more so as you get into the Hudson Valley, mid Hudson Valley and into upstate New York where you'll probably have more lift, more moisture and thus you'll have more on the way of some snow. So here's the GFS again bringing the low across to western Pennsylvania. Again if the low is further down to the south we would have a little bit more in the way of accumulations but given that it's north you get more of the southwesterly wind flow in here. So that's why we're again we're not expecting much out of this clipper at least how it appears right now. Here's the European, even more lackluster with it, but a little more cold air that's trying to work down. So the cold air advection going on with this clipper would limit the mild air coming up out of the south. But uh, again, also cuts down on the precipitation, actually dries a lot of the precipitation out. You get out towards western Maryland, this could be some two to four inch amounts, and then up here you're looking at around three and six possible as you get way up towards central New York and into the very, very cold areas of northwestern New York State. And this is what our forecast models show us at ABC2. Again, this whole precipitation working in uh, after the 6 o'clock hour tomorrow night, tomorrow evening, tomorrow night, it's coming in here, uh, mixing down across DC, and then we'll probably all mix over some light, uh, light rain, wet snow coming in for the overnight hours as the low really cranks the southwesterly wind. So at the initial onset of precip by Thursday after, uh, Thursday evening that is, uh, it may come in as a burst of some snow and then mix over to just some wet snow and then the system is out of here as we end this week. So in terms of snowfall again we're not looking at much maybe a dusting. It's showing one inch in Baltimore. I think this model is a little overdone 
but you may get some one inch amounts as you get north and west into the colder pockets of Maryland and then in Allentown, PA Central, you know, William uh, Scranton in here, you get uh, north of York, Harrisburg may pick up around two or per perhaps three inches. So that's how the first storm looks to, uh, to, to shake out. Then we watch the system for the weekend. We're going to watch an area of low pressure develop um, across the southern states. It's going to ride along the southern jet stream and then position itself south and west of Baltimore as we go into Sunday afternoon. Um, we're going to have a high to the north that's going to be our cold high. It's going to allow for the cold air to sink in. Uh, but what this system is going to do is actually run further down towards the south. So here's the GFS bringing the low over Maryland. But at that point, we have such uh, such abundance of cold air. I mean, you have your 850s down at uh, 0 Z850 way down towards Atlanta. So this is not a situation. It's, it appears on the GFS of seeing a rain or snow. It would be just light snow coming in Saturday, uh, Sunday afternoon, Saturday, Sunday evening into Monday morning. But again, note that the GFS doesn't really have much of a storm. Uh, you look at the European, a little bit more aggressive with a storm, but again, look at the position a little bit further towards the north. Thus, you'll have your rain snow line along the Maryland-Pennsylvania line, and then we'd be warm sectored or mild sectored, allowing for wet snow mixing in with rain. But th this is the last night's uh, European, so we'll get a new one in and see whether this is actually a viable solution. I do want to note that all this high... Uh, pressure sitting off towards the north and to the west so that would keep or suppress the storm down towards the south so I think the Europeans incorrect in its solution I think with all this high height going on to the north that's gonna actually push the storm or for, force the storm down to the south and then there may be some secondary coastal development but that would be very very late so we're gonna learn from our mistakes with the last storm when you have a clipper that's redeveloping it seems extremely hard for Maryland to get into any kind of snow bands or any kind of action if you have a late forming clipper or a you know clipper going over a coastal storm. Uh, here's the European. Uh, this is the GFS ensembles. These are the new ensembles. Uh, and again, note that the low or the tight clustering of ensemble members, all 51 members of it or 21 members of the GFS, down to the south with just a tremendous amount of cold air sitting up towards the north. So the GFS. Uh, operational and its ensemble members supporting southern tracking storm which would be more snow Sunday evening Sunday night time frame that's what we're looking at if you look at last night's uh, European uh, the European ensembles look much better than the operational most of the clustering keeping it down to the south with all the high heights sitting up towards the north so this is your block up here here's your low pressure in here and then again the question is, is do we have a southern system is there a lot more in the way of moisture and that's something we'll have to answer over the next couple of days what I can promise you though is the next six to ten days this is going into February 7th to 10th period does not look anything close to mild I mean we have tremendous uh, low height fields sitting across southeastern uh, Canada into the eastern United States that supports cold supports a trough uh, this is interesting. It's showing that we, we're going to continue to build some sort of ridge in here. So that may be our negative North Atlantic oscillation, which will promote, promote more coastal storms. And then we, of course, have more heights sitting across the western United States in here. Um, and then maybe this is not real. We'll see how this all plays out. But I think our, I think we, our Arctic oscillation, I think we're going to see more high heights in here versus low heights. So we'll see how that plays out. And then we have, again this strong jet coming in to this pattern lifting up towards the north and coming right back down so you know you have this negative eastern pacific oscillation that looks like it's going to just go nuts so uh, you know look the storm didn't work out I, my apologies we did go three to six inches we had some three inch marks west of the city we had nothing in the city nothing in 95 we got dry slotted and, uh, you know, I really thought that that forecast was going to work out all completely different. Um, you know, we don't, we don't like to put out bad forecasts, not because of the credit. You know, yeah, your credibility's hurt, you know, bruised, I'd call it, because we didn't go too crazy. But, um, you know, I don't, like to, I don't like to put out, you know, bad forecast. That's just not why I got into this job. If I wanted to do that and deceive the public, I'd... Maybe I'd choose a, I'm not going to say what occupation I would have chose, but it would have been a different occupation. My job is to be right. It's, 
you know, this was a humbling experience. All right, I'll talk more tonight on ABC News at 6 o'clock about this pattern going forward. Um, we'll try to maybe nail down some clipper amounts. I'm not expecting much, and we'll try to look at that southern storm together on our newscast. All right, have a great day.